Hi there. Thank you very, very much for joining me. Quick update and a quick explanation and possibly the inspiration for me of my entire orchid growing career, if you want to call it that, the possible affordable alternative to EpiWeb. Scrubby pads from the kitchen, not with any treatment on it, and extractor fan filter. So let's have a look-see. Let me just introduce Ninja Orchid's root grade scale. 10 being very thick and one being fine. This, Trachocentrum Tegrina, is a number five. The Brassavola flageralis is a number six. The Eonopsis popcorn haruri is a one. Phalaenopsis wilsonii is a 10. And another flageralis comes in at a six in root size. Why have I gone to make myself a root grade scale? Well, in the beginning, I wasn't sure how this material would react, respond, or behave towards roots, or vice versa. How will the roots react and respond towards this material? So I gave myself a 1 to 10 ratio in order to determine, at the beginning, which roots will adapt and be able to penetrate through the material. And it turns out that thicker roots need a little bit more of a fluffy, more of a forgiving material as opposed to thinner roots that can weave and wind themselves all the way through. Now for some that might be pretty obvious and possibly in the initial stages I would have thought um, that makes logical sense as well. But I have seen thick roots plow through something so thin and come out the other side uh, and still function that it boggles the mind. And that is why I put myself into the Ninja Orchid's root grade scale, Norg's situation in order to keep proper track of what is going on here. I can't say much about the Trichocentrum. She is not growing any roots whatsoever, but because I noticed that my Phalaenopsis wilsonira was having none of it on this material, which is a scrubby pad, the roots were not going through. Even the one that tried has dried back. Could be several reasons. Could be that the orchid, that's how she grows. She is a deciduous orchid, so is losing a leaf. Am I concerned about this? Yes and no, 50-50. I've never had this orchid with only one leaf. I've never seen the roots dry off that fast during the winter, so maybe this is what she normally does at this stage of her life and is going to bounce back and wake up, or maybe not. But because of this experience, being a 10 in my books, and there was no penetration of the scrubby pad, I went and did my little root grade scale in order to, to then be able to define more specifically what works, what's best, and what doesn't. From the scrubby pad, I evolved then into finding something a little bit more fluffy, a little bit more forgiving on the roots, which was the extractor fan material that for me has now also replaced sphagnum moss. So if you see a, a mount like this, I call this a Michael mount, it's the original. If you see a mount like that, I call it a ninja mount, and that is a derivative of the original. If you see a mount like this, with a scrubby pad and the extractor fan filter, this is a hybrid that is obviously a Michael Ninja mount or Ninja Michael mount, depending on what comes out first. <laughs> but we'll get to that just now. I am thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying the options that I have with this material. And I'm gonna show you how else I use it other than just mounting and exchanging it for sphagnum moss. But you can see on my popcorn haruri what I've done while there was still sphagnum moss on this mount, I already put a scrubby pad on the back to be ready for such a time that I could peel off the sphagnum moss and then just replace a line where the sphagnum moss was with the extractor fan filter. That's all I wanted to do. Unfortunately, the weather had other ideas 
and I had a massive spike on the top and it kind of cracked a bit the joint on the rhizome of the bulb on the top. So I turn, it turns out I actually took the orchid off the mount, remounted her and then, you know, applied, sewed on, literally sewed on the hob fan filter. And here's the thing. I'm going to show you another example, which could cause some confusion, but I want to clarify because sometimes thoughts go in a wacky direction and then afterwards it seems like the opposite has happened. Okay, I mounted my new Peguanum onto this configuration. And you can see that the scrubby pad is in the front and the white material is in the back. Why did I do that when my popcorn Haruri has the scrubby pad in the back? and the white material serves as sphagnum moss in the front. Well, initially I had no intention of removing the Ionopsis from her mount. I was just going to replace the moss with the filter. But I had to remove her because I have a tendency of mounting orchids a little bit too high on their mounts as they're supposed to be. So with the cracked pseudobulb and everything else, I changed it. But I didn't turn the mount around because the roots that were back here had already two, two of them had actually penetrated through the scrubby pad and were actually quite happy in there. So without wanting to stress the orchid further, I just took the orchid as she was, just lowered her a little bit on the mount to correct the error I made earlier on, and then added my filter here to simulate my sphagnum moss that she is accustomed to hoping to minimize the stress of having taken her off a mount and all that. So that is why she is in this configuration. Peguanum is in this configuration because the pseudobulbs are a lot more fine. It's a smaller growing orchid. It has very, very tight, compact growing pattern. And if I need to water this orchid, I cannot have any extra humidity impeding possible new growths coming out. She is a miniature after all. So any of those teeny tiny new growths coming and me with my sprayer going at it around the edges like that, if I put it onto the fan filter here, you can see how much water is actually retained and pooling in the material just by that little spray. And here in the front, it'll dry out much quicker. So I use the materials back and forth, depending on do I need a humidity buffer? And I do in my climate. So in this case, I don't want the white material because I've got root grade scale number one here and I get much more humidity out of the compact scrubby pad than I do out of the looser fan filter. This will dry up a little faster than this. So that is what I've done here because the peguanum needs a lot, a lot of humidity around it, but it shouldn't stay wet all the time, especially when it's gonna get really dry and I need to be watering a lot. Once I've watered in the front, I can then go and use my humidity buffer, which I call the back layer if I have applied it. And that maintains a certain little microclimate around that orchid for an extended period of time with the roots at a number one. The next thing I've done here, let me go a little bit further on. I have two examples of a flagellaris. These are they. This is not from there. This was a separate orchid that I bought because I wasn't sure if this one here was gonna make it. This one came back to life miraculously after two years of being like a stick with two not even viable growths. And then last year it just went nuts and grew three new growths and was waking up. I'm like, okay, on the ninja mount you go. This is my first ninja mount and it is only a one single layer of the hob material sewed to the structure of this white thing, which is actually a sandwich drying thing for a container that I cut up. And it's doing really well. Let me show you one more time. Because the roots, in my opinion, are a six. They need a more forgiving material to grow through. Is that in focus? There we go. And you see the roots are coming through and they're happy. For a little piece like this, 
That's perfect, that's plenty, that's good enough. You can see my other flagellaris has actually now got a mount on a mount. That is because it's always lived on this mount with a lot of sphagnum moss around it, which every two years I would have to switch and I just was getting tired of it, disturbing the roots. Flagellaris roots in general are not forgiving. First of all, the new roots don't hydrate. They just repel the water. And then, then the other roots, when they start absorbing water, it is very, very easy to rot them out, especially when they're used to the air like this. No more sphagnum moss for me. I wanted something permanent, something I can play with. And you can see that it amount on amount, which is, in fact, two layers of the fan filter. And you can see inside there, the roots have gone, well, one root has gone through and already is nestled into the next layer, which is fabulous. And the next ones are doing their thing, but the root tips have dried out. That's just climate based. That is not because of the material doing anything to the roots. Up here, I always try to maintain this root tip for as long as I can. There's a root tip that's doing quite well. I've still got it. It's a bit of a headache. One day it's going to stop, but that's because of mechanical damage as opposed to the material. So I have this more layered because of the high, high humidity this orchid requires. It has a lot more roots. Eventually, if this little piece here picks up, I can add scraps of the fan filter around it, just like I did with the Eonopsis, which might one day look something like so. So these are scraps from all the sewing that I've done. And then I will be able to needle point <laughs> little pieces of it onto these mount structures at Liberty. And the beauty being I can mount and mount on mount on mount. I can layer and layer, take off as needed, and I don't have to disturb the orchids. Genius, I love it. But wait, there's more. This stuff is has taken me to the next level. And let me show you one more example that I use this hub material for. Right here. Rescue bottles instead of sphagnum moss. I used to always use Lekka or Ceramis, but there's also the issue with algae and all that kind of business going on. I'll touch on that with the mounts right at the end. But this is, for me, perfect. I had a little piece of a maxillaria come off. I wanted to propagate it and I've taken the bottom sheaths off. I will remove the blooms eventually. I don't want to stress this little piece, but it was also just breaking off from cousin it. And you can see that I just fill up with water right at the bottom. And I keep that fan material touching the water deposit at the bottom and the orchid just nestles and rests on the top. For my little rescue situation, high humidity, I use the scraps as well. It's perfect. So what is the downside if there is one? Depends on how you look at it, what your opinion is. I don't think it's a downside. It's just a natural consequence of the effect of fertilizing and watering and all that business. And that is, there is an accumulation of algae happening right at the bottom. And I can quite easily counteract that with taking a high jet of my sprayer and really, really blasting it. So the algae doesn't come off, but you can see where I've already been peeling away. You can see the whiter here and the darker there. Well, there's some algae, little bit of algae layer on the top there little sheets that come off very, very easily. And eventually I can just peel them off with my fingernail. And then yes, the extractor fan material looks a bit stained at the bottom, but the algae isn't overtaking anything. If aesthetics are an issue, I might one day go in with a little bit of bleach solution and just, you know, get it to be a little bit more pale. But you can see how easily this algae comes off. So I'm, honestly, I'm not fussed. When you look at this hob material, these mounts and everything in general, the last thing that you're probably wondering aesthetically 
is the algae. <laughs> because they do look a little bit weird. They're not the prettiest. I agree. I have gotten used to them. I think they're fabulous because of what they're doing for my orchids in my climate. And I can actually breathe a sigh of relief that I don't have to contemplate remossing, fiddling with the roots and fiddling with the orchid. And having sewn this one on within a matter of five minutes with all the options that I have, this is awesome. Forever, forever grateful to Michael McCarthy for this genius idea. I can't state it any other way. I am going to stick with this system and play around with it and continue adding layers as I see fit. I have enough of these structures. I'm not talking they're pretty, but for me, they're gorgeous. Just gorgeous because they work. This is what's happening. I love it. I love it. I hope that this has somewhat inspired you. Maybe not to do it as clinical as I have done. Maybe to do it just for the rescue version of the material. But either way, I hope that this has somewhat got your thinking caps going. Whether you like the aesthetics or not, I feel that as long as the orchid is doing well, I'm quite happy to look beyond what is not so attractive to the eye, let's just say. For me, again, I find them gorgeous because they work. Appreciate having you here. Thank you for your time very, very much. All thoughts, whether it be positive, negative, your observations, please leave them in the comments below. I love to hear your opinions and it doesn't always mean you have to agree with me. Let's talk. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and take care. Please stay safe. Bye.